Hey all, I hope you all are doing great. This is Dr. Jyoti Bala. In this session, we are going to discuss about a significant topic and area. Many of the young researchers, especially the PhD one, they always ask me this question about US postdoc applications, procedure, and especially my interview experience. So I have already made one video where I've given you idea about the procedure, the strategies, the tips and tricks. If you have missed watching that video, I request you to watch that video also. But in this section, I will be specifically discussing about the interview part. So how was the interview? What kind of questions they ask and how you can answer these things and how you can prepare well for these uh, interviews. And these days everything is going online. And especially we will be discussing these uh, topic related to biotech and life sciences sector. So do check out this video. If you are in a state where you are planning to apply for US postdoc applications, or maybe you are in the final stages of your PhD, then do check out and do consider these points actually. Interview is only one part of your overall procedure. There are other factors also which we have to consider. Like you have to check for your research interest, your supervisors and institute selection, your preparation of documentation in terms of CV, SOPs, your motivation letters, along with that your immigration documentation and your academic uh, documentation and transcript requirement. In case of postdoc, they usually don't ask for language examination and certifications. So do check out my previous videos where I have already given you a fair idea how you can apply. You can go for fellowship based programs also and you can directly approach the institutes and supervisors and how you can make your professional CVs, SOPs for this purpose and how you can write cover letter. All these things I have already made in a video form. I will be putting the links of all these videos in the description section. So any one of you who has missed watching that, please do watch that video because that is going to help you in your overall application processor also and for preparing your interview also. As we know, interview is one part of your overall procedure. So once you have selected your topic, your institute, you have prepared your application and everything, the chances is that you are going to get interviews call sometime within week, sometime within months. So preparing well and approaching these institute and supervisor, you can say three months, six months in advance is a good idea. And here, in case of US especially, you have to take some time duration interval for your immigration processing also, because if you are from technology, biotechnology fields, and if you have experience in RNA viruses or chemical related things, radioactivity related things, then in immigration, they have extra processing for uh, that purpose also. So do consider that time interval also. So applying six months, eight months in advance is a well, uh, is a well time duration. These days, most of the interview happens on digital platform due to COVID also. And if you are applying for these positions from different countries, then it's a better option to give this interviews in digital and virtual platforms. Many institute and R&D based uh, postdoc applications and that supervisors and institute also sometimes ask for telephonic round. So we have to prepare in advance for telephonic interviews if that happens and for virtual interview maybe on zoom google or any platform so we have to consider ourselves that we are better prepared for these telephonic interviews and virtual interviews so if you have applied there if you have got these interviews in what way you can prepare well in advance for these kind of interview let's discuss that part we have to prepare for telephonic round of interviews also and for video conferencing based interviews also. What I have noticed with my personal experience is that when I have applied in universities and institute based postdoc application, most of the time they have conducted directly video interviews. 
but on parallel when I, I have applied for R&D based postdoc or scientific job then they have first conducted the telephonic rounds and then then they have conducted the video conferencing so it's better because there is a difference between your telephonic round and your video conferencing sometimes they also ask you to give the presentation of your past experience and what you can do in those lab in terms of proposals also so lab to lab also things vary so it's better we prepare in advance for both the condition if someone will ask you to give telephonic interview or maybe video or presentation based interviews let me give you my experiences with this kind of interviews so both the interviews experiences i am going to give you the where i have been selected also and where the things didn't work at what level so we'll be discussing both positive and negative interview experiences so let me give you a fair idea when i have applied there i have approached the supervisor mostly i have applied on the basis of job openings which i have got from the uh, newsletters and all these job portals i was looking for these jobs uh, related to postdoc and instead of applying random application i was very sure that okay the areas of that lab and my expertise are overlapping and then on that basis i have applied so instead of applying to random lab i have chosen the supervisor and institute who are working on similar areas first things was that that i i was applying to biology rna biology aptomer kind of molecular biology based lab so because i was not sending random mails that was the reason within few weeks and month i have got interview call and it was not like directly they were sending you interview call the first uh, emails which we got was like they have shortlisted us for that particular position so first mail was like sort listing mail they wanted to have a uh, telephonic conversations it is not like very detail or professional conversation just they wanted to know whether i'm really interested in joining that lab or what was my research experience in previous uh, projects what i have done so they just wanted to know whether you are serious for that position or you really wanted to come to that lab in such kind of short listing and casual call what i have experienced these supervisor these supervisor actually wanted to explore that the candidate is having genuine interest to join that lab and whether they have expertise to work in such lab so they just wanted to explore these things so i have like applied in university of louisville yale university florida international university and columbia university the best part was that once you discuss with that they will give you a good ideas about these things also if you are not a good fit to that lab and what you are lacking or maybe where you are uh, doing some mistake while applying whether you have done your homework whether you have read their resource publication or not or maybe you have different skill set and different lab best uh, suits you best so all such kind of interaction one on one interaction with those supervisor really help you to get a good idea about your situation and what lab suits you best so in this casual interviews we mostly discussed about my expertise what in that lab is going on and whether we are really interested in joining that lab based on these casual interactions both at institute and university level and r&d sector i have noticed in r&d sector actually this casual interaction happens via phone and they just check whether you are really interested and thereafter the senior person will call from the r&d sector and then you will have proper interview with r&d setting there are few differences maybe in different videos i will focus on that part but here we will be focusing for academia institute and universities so what i have noticed once the casual interviews 
or the first initial interaction happens with the supervisor if they see that okay you are really interested in joining that lab you do have expertise and you are a good candidate to fit in that lab based on that in both not both i think in three labs i have given the interviews one was university of louisville other was florida Inter Un international university and other was yale university so what was my experience in the second round they have approached me and they have like the directly to the supervisor and we have long interactions via sometime on uh, telephone also and sometime with video conferencing or and there we have discussed actually what i have done in terms of my projects my expertise what's going on in that lab what kind of grant they are writing what kind of grant and project they do have so based on these second interaction i got from louisville and from yale they have asked to give the presentations and uh, from florida international university i think uh, they haven't asked for giving the interview they have directly uh, chosen me based on the telephonic round only so what happened in the presentation round let me discuss that the online presentations vary depending on the lab to lab supervisor to supervisor usually they gives you time around 20 to 30 minutes where you have to give an idea about what you have done in your past maybe phd work or your project and dissertation related things or what kind of experience expertise do you have sometimes they do ask what you will going to do in that lab also but if you are going to perform the similar kind of project then they won't ask you what you are going to do or perform so in my case they have asked me both to give the research idea about my phd first my presentation related to my phd and publication and my research plan if i would go to that lab what i am going to do so this kind of presentation in 20 30 minutes we have given so online presentation on skype we have done and based on that few interaction and question answer round we have as i said for postdoc interviews and application most of the labs and in us especially they don't check for uh, they don't ask for TOEFL and all these things, but they uh, like uh, based on your interview, they judge and they give certain marks in your communication skills and writing skills and all these things. I was not uh, knowing that part when I was giving that interview that someone is also doing this uh, judging. But once I went to the institute, I got that I got very good marks in that part also. So in advance, you like you be better prepared that they not only judging your presentation skills in scientific way, but your way of public speaking, your communication skills are also being judged. So be prepared for that part also. In my second uh, postdoc offer from US in Florida International University, most of our interaction were telephonics and video conferencing based. They didn't ask for the proper PPT based presentation on phone only we have discussed all the scientific discussion related to our research interest our experience and all those things luckily my supervisor and i was having similar research experience we both had our phds and research experience related to rna aptamos and virology my supervisor supervisor in usa has already done his PhD from NIA, which is near to my PhD place, JNU. So we were having really research-wise a good amount of overlap. So based on our scientific interaction, things went well. I got the positions also with salary hike. Let me give you one another example where things didn't work at the final stages. So prior to my Louisville and Florida international interviews and selections, I've already given one interview in Yale University also. So I've been selected there. The initial telephonic round, lab interaction, supervisor discussion, everything went very well. And I was asked to join that lab and give and provide all the document related to my CV, transcript and recommendation. But there, I think during that period, my PhD supervisor got retired so somehow i didn't give the 
recommendation letter of my supervisor or current supervisor so due to that reason i didn't get that job offer so many of my another students and young researcher also have similar uh, challenging situation because many places they ask for uh, supervisors recommendation current supervisor recommendation and in many stages with your phd and in your postdoc lab condition and in supervisor sometimes you do have some conflict sometimes your supervisor is retiring or they are aged sometimes they are not very comfortable in uh, if they are not from native uh, uh, english speaking countries or maybe uh, like uh, if you are from japan you must know that few supervisor are not very comfortable so in that scenario if you are not able to give the name of that supervisors you might face little bit challenges but in different scenario like in i i have said in the florida international experience and other postdoc uh, related interviews they didn't ask for current supervisor letter they are okay with any recommendation letter if you have any conflict also you can tell the genuine situation in a professional way to your uh, supervisor where you are applying so these things happens you can like professionally wisely you can handle these things but sometime they will ask for giving these recommendation letter and sometime the lab doesn't ask you like for faculty interviews also these days they don't ask for the current supervisor's letter because in scientific community we face some challenging scenarios also because of scientific and ethical conflicts I believe with this experience both positive and challenging one it's going to help you in your application processes so that you can improve and you can uh, avoid those mistake and improve your application processes in summary i would only suggest you to prepare well in advance make sure that you have done your background check related to your research supervisor topic institute and uh, make sure that your cvs sops and cover letter are effective and professional and for interviews i would suggest you to be prepared for both telephonic round and video rounds and uh, make sure that your ppts are well prepared in advance and if possible get the recommendations from your current supervisor if you doesn't have then just discuss with your supervisor where you are applying things will work out don't worry good luck thank you i hope you have liked the session and if you have found the video insightful and useful then don't forget to like and subscribe the channel and kindly share these information among your scientific endeavor Thank you and good luck for your application.